Hello, my name is Brad. I review tech for creative professionals and a little bit of a different video today. The folks over at Loop Deck sent me their latest product, the CT, which is an illustration slash photo slash video editing console. They're sponsoring this video because they wanted to see how I could find a way to fold this into my illustration workflow. As many of you know, Wacom Cintiq pen displays don't ship with shortcut keys built in anymore. So I'm gonna be using this in conjunction with the new Wacom One to see if I can speed up my workflow. And I've picked out a special project. For me, it's always been pretty time consuming to ink and color comics in Adobe Illustrator. And I'm gonna be teaching you how to change that. There are several steps to this project. First, we bring in the sketch I'm gonna be working from. Second, I'm gonna be outlining it with a pencil tool. And third, we're gonna prep the line work for coloring. Fourth, we're gonna use those lines in conjunction with the live paint tool to fill in the spaces like coloring book style. Lastly, we're gonna add some shadows and effects to show you how to layer things on top of our new colors. Now you can do all this without the CT, but my plan is to work it into my workflow to show you how you can speed it up even more. So other than having really pretty colors, what does the Loop Deck CT let me do? Well, it's a custom editing console that is designed to enhance how you work. So let's jump into the settings and take a look. The software is designed to be used with a lot of different programs. Video editing apps like Adobe Premiere or After Effects or Final Cut Pro. Also apps that I use all the time like Photoshop and Illustrator. And it's not just these programs. It can be customized to run shortcut commands for any program on your computer, whether you're on Mac or on Windows, as well as creating macros and customizing different pages for the touch buttons and dials. More on that in a minute. There's different controls on this thing. There are some clicky keyboard-like buttons down here. You also have a light-up touch screen up above with haptic feedback. Also some smaller dials along the side, and we can't forget this big dial down here, which also has its own little screen. All of these are customizable. There are presets already for Illustrator, but when I jumped in and I started working, I immediately saw ways that I could improve improve on what's already there, jump in and start doing my own thing. So for Illustrator, I have several profiles set up on here currently. So I have my base tools. So if I'm doing something like a logo, I'm gonna want one profile on here. And then I could just toggle through my keys here, find these different profiles that I wanna use, or if I wanna use a tool really quickly that's not part of my primary profile I'm working in, I can just jump back and forth between these things. The main one that I'm gonna be working with today is this profile. Let me show you what this can do. So I have all my base tools, like my arrow tool and my pencil tool. I also have a pen tool and some of the things that I need specifically for this project, like the ability to group things, ungroup things, uh, make a live paint object. I also have these down here, which are gonna be really handy for picking colors and then using that live paint tool and even the blob brush tool to do some of that coloring. Let me show you some of the things I can do with those knobs. I'm gonna draw a quick line here on the canvas and and the first one I have is the stroke width. So as I scroll up and down, I can make it thicker or thinner, which is gonna come in super handy. I could also adjust the layer opacity with this other knob, and I can navigate through the objects on my canvas with this knob. Now, we're not gonna be getting into that complicated of an illustration, but oftentimes when I am doing something with a lot of shapes, being able to grab a shape and going, I wanna grab the one right behind it, I can just go click back, it's gonna grab that other object. Over on the other side, I've got things like resize, so I can resize the height, this one's gonna allow me to resize the width, and of course I've got this one which allows me to rotate an object really quickly as well. The other knob on here you're gonna see me using a lot is giving me the ability to zoom in and out or pan back and forth. Now, I like to switch between these quite a bit, so sometimes I'll just jump into other profiles to, say, change by fill color or something like that. These keyboard keys, I'm keeping mainly the same because I love the undo key. I need me some undo key all the time. The save button I don't use quite as much. I probably should. It's good to save your work often. I've actually mapped that to the shift key because that's something that I use quite a bit. We also have a function button and a keyboard button. Function is cool because if I hold down on the function, it goes to the secondary action of a lot of these keys. So you not only have 
just the primary functions that you've mapped to this, you have those secondary functions as well. Over here, these keys, the A, B, C, and D, what those allow me to do is move objects back and forth. For example, A is gonna take an object and move it to the top of my layer order. B is gonna move it to the very bottom. C is gonna move it down one, and D is gonna move it up one. So I have the ability to knock it way up, way down, or also get really granular with those. So anyway, I just wanted to share that layout why don't we get started and pull in our illustration from Photoshop? So when I jumped over to Photoshop, you probably notice all of my tools have changed. Like Illustrator, I can jump in here and use the default tools or I can go in and customize them to my heart's content and you can do so much in Photoshop as well. Let me bring up my color picker really quick because I can adjust the brightness or the saturation of the colors just by coming in here and fiddling with the wheel a little bit. I just turned it a lot, so it just adjusted the color a lot, but you get the idea. It, it's pretty cool. But I've also got layer control. I can assign Photoshop actions to buttons, changing brush parameters, changing colors, adding adjustment layers and controls and parameters with the dial. Anyway, I'm going to spend all day on Photoshop, so I'm just going to hit cancel, get out of there. I'm going to select my selection tool, and I'm going to to go ahead and copy and paste this image into Adobe Illustrator. We will paste this in here. Uh, I'm going to change the opacity because it was turned all the way down from the last thing I was doing. And then I want to use that shift key I mapped because if I just start resizing this thing, it's going to resize kind of funky. I don't want to do that. So by holding the shift key, it's going to allow me to resize to uh, proportionality that I'm looking for. I think that's the word I'm gonna use here. So let's go ahead and zoom in, pan around on this little guy. So I didn't want him to be this dark. So I'm just gonna use my knob to turn down the layer opacity on him a little bit. And then I'm gonna go ahead and create a new layer, which is where we're going to be using our pencil tool, which I'll turn on right there to draw him. Now I'm just gonna focus on those exterior lines when I start to sketch him in. Let me turn up the stroke width so you could actually see it. And let's see, I gotta draw another line there and another line there. Oops, undo, another line there. Now you've probably noticed at this point, Brad, you're overshooting your lines. What are you doing, dude? Don't worry. This is all part of the plan because what I want to do is trim these lines afterwards because I'm going to be applying a brush to them. So I'm just going to draw the outlines of this character and then I'm going to be back to show you how to draw the inside lines of this character. Okay, so that looks pretty good for my outside lines. Now, my inside lines, I'm gonna create a brand new layer in order to set up those inside lines. Now, that might not make sense right now, but it will in the future because I want the inside lines to be a different width than the outside lines, and being able to have those on separate layers is gonna make that a lot easier for me. So my next step is just to come in here on this new layer, and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna be overshooting my lines and drawing all of these in. Okay, so hopefully I got every line that I needed to get into this character, and right now it does not look good. I totally understand that, but our next step is to apply a brush to this to really clean up these lines. So what I have over here on the side of my canvas is a little shape. This is going to become my brush shape. So let's turn it into a brush. I'm not gonna go into a ton of detail here. I'm just gonna go to my brush palette, hit new brush, choose an art brush, click okay. I'm just gonna go with the defaults. I'm not even gonna bother to name this thing, but let me show you what this is gonna do. When we draw a line and then I apply that brush to it, now we get this nice tapered brush shape, which is exactly what I was going for. So let me get rid of that. And what we're gonna do is we're going to select all of our layers. Let me grab my selection tool there, grab everything, and then go to that brush palette and tap on that brush. Sometimes you have to tap on it twice. And voila, we have lines. Now they're a little thick, 
So what I could do is I could take my stroke width dial and I could dial it down just a little bit. And in fact, I want my green lines, which is my interior lines, to be thinner than my outlines. So I'm going to lock that outline layer. So now I only have my green lines and I could keep dialing this down a couple notches until it looks the way I want the character to look. Cool. So our next step is we have to prep this character for coloring, which means removing the excess lines and then painting this character in. So step one is we want to select everything, all of the lines, and we want to copy, and let's scroll over to the side of our canvas because what we're gonna do is paint him in there. I'm sorry, paste him in there so we can paint him in there. And the reason we're duplicating him is we're about to destroy these lines, which are really easy to edit. So we're gonna go up to object. We're going to go up to shape, I'm sorry, path. And then we're going to say outline strokes, which takes these strokes and turns them into shapes. Now, if we wanted to color the character in right now, we could. I could turn him into a live paint image, and I have a button for that, but let me show you where to find it if you have never done this before. I go to Object, and I go down to Live Paint, and I click on Make, and it turns this character into a live paint area. So any area that is enclosed, let me grab my Live Paint tool here, grab a color, any area that's enclosed, I can fill in coloring book style. Sweet. But before we go doing that, we have to get rid of all of these extra lines. So after I make this character, I'm going to ungroup this character, which is going to break all of these little shapes into tiny individual shapes. So I'll go back to object, I'll go back to live paint, and then I will go to this bottom option, which is expand. Now, right now, uh, this is all grouped, so I need to ungroup it. So I'm gonna go ahead and tap on ungroup in my loop deck. And now let me zoom in and show you what I could do. All of these lines, they're individual lines that I could just come in here and I can select and I can delete like that. And when you start deleting these lines, what you see are these really cool, this really cool line work start to appear that's gonna show me these different thicknesses and thinnesses that we're gonna be using throughout our comic. So I'm gonna blast through this and I will see you on the other side in a minute. All right, our line work is looking pretty good. It's looking pretty clean. I'd probably spend a little more time on it if it was mine, but you get the idea. Our next step is to paint him. So I'm gonna take my selection tool, select the whole thing. Now we're gonna live paint this object. So we go to object, live paint, make. I've got a shortcut though. One button press, we are good to go. Now the next thing we need to do is let's grab our live paint tool. I'm actually gonna tap on that to grab a color maybe find a nice shade and go ahead and now I just tap on all of these shapes, coloring book style, and I start coloring things in. I wanna color in his hair, I go here. I grab kind of a more reddish brown shape and then boom, 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 I start filling these in. I'm gonna always have to zoom in uh, to get more of that and to get into those details. I also have this mapped in such a way that I always find when I'm painting, I miss a spot, like this spot above the eye. Eyedropper tool, grab the color. Paint bucket tool, fill it in. Forgot the eyebrows. Eyedropper tool, grab it. Paint bucket tool, there we go. We fill it in. One other thing that I did wanna show you before I finish coloring this guy in is that if you have a shape, you can use this to change the hue and change the color of the stroke or the fill. Let me jump over to a different profile where that's actually mapped to the wheel. Now, if I wanna make it lighter, boom, I scrub up on the wheel and I get a nice lighter shade of color. I want it darker, I scrub down. It works super well if you're trying to get different shades of color on your characters. So, I'm going back to my profile so I can move around a little bit easier and I'm gonna go ahead and fill in this entire character. So now that he's all painted in, let's add some details. And I'm gonna be adding a lot of these shadows and highlights on their own layer so I can keep all of this stuff separate as one does. And I'm gonna be using the blob brush tool. That's why it's mapped here. Let me show you how this works. I'm gonna grab 
a uh, dark color here like black and anywhere where I draw it paints a line big deal but when I select that line that line is all one shape that gets moved around that's how we're gonna be drawing our shadows so let me grab that tool again zoom in so I can get some detail and then I'm just gonna come in here and start to add shadow to his hair and when I let go it's still all one shape as I add more using the blob brush, maybe I'll add a little bit of shadow to his chin. Just like that, maybe a lot around the bottom of his ears. I am being a little sloppy with this, but it's giving you the idea. Go ahead and fill in his neck just like that. Add a little shadow there. Uh, where else? Let's add a little bit more to his hairline. And then I think we'll be in uh, pretty good shape. There we go. So what is our next step? Well, I wanna adjust the opacity of the shadow. We obviously don't want it to be black. And look at that, we have a dial set to that. So as long as that is selected, I can come in here and I can just change that to what I want it to be. But I could do more with it. Let's go to Window and let's go down to Transparency. That's gonna open up this little dialog here. And I'm gonna change this to overlay and that's going to affect the way the light runs through it so instead of being a shade of gray now when i adjust it hold on let me select it and then i'll select overlay there we go we get a nice shade coming through there it doesn't gray out the color too much and we could do the same thing with white so let me grab a white color here and let me grab my blob brush and let me hit his hairline like that. And then we grab that, we go here, we hit overlay, and nice, we have a nice highlight. In fact, what's fun about this, grab the blob brush again, I can add highlights to all of these strands of hair, kind of like that. And then let's select that, where's my shift key? Let's set these to overlay. And there we go. That's my comic coloring process using the Loop Deck CT. What do you think? Let me know down below in the comments. Thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.